Hi and welcome. In my last demo video, I showed you guys some of the new functionality part of vSAN 6.6. One of the features that was missing, however, was vSAN encryption. Today, that's what I'm going to be demoing to you guys. So I'm going to log into the vCenter uh, web client first. And after logging in, what we will need to do next is actually add a key management server so we can enable vSAN encryption. So that is what we're going to do first. I'm going to click away the, uh, the licensing message itself, and then I'm going to go, going to go to the vCenter server object, and I'm going to go to the configuration pane and look for the key management server section so that I can actually add the key management server. Oh, and before I forget, I'm using a system provided by Talis, but of course you can use any of the KMIP compliant key management technologies out there, including solutions by SafeNet, I trust and others. Now let's continue with the uh, configuration of the, uh, the system. So here's the section. We're going to go and click on add KMS. And now we'll need to start filling out these fields. First of all, we're going to give the cluster a name, uh, which in my case is an externally hosted uh, KMS system. So I'm just going to give it a random name. And then I'm going to add the IP address. After adding the IP address, I will also need to specify the server port, which is the uh, the standard KMS uh, port in this case. So I'm going to add the port number and then I will need to add the, the proxy address because I'm going to go to an externally hosted system. I need to make sure that I can actually reach the internet. So I fill out the proxy, the proxy port, and I'm good to go. So I'm going to click OK. And now a connection is going to be made uh, to this KMS and it's going to make this KMS a default as well for this particular, particular vCenter server. So we're now presented with all of the information about this particular KMS system, and it has been added to the, uh, the vCenter server. As you can see, however, it hasn't established the trust automatically, so that's what we're going to do next. In this particular situation, we will actually need to provide the, uh, the certificate and the private key manually. So we're gonna choose that option, and then we're gonna paste the relevant information into the, uh, the certificate pane and into the private key pane. We'll do the certificate pane first. And then we'll, we'll do the, uh, the private key next. After having copied and pasted everything into it, we're going to click OK. And what should happen next is that the, uh, the KMS server should actually show up within vCenter as being a trusted system. It's going to take about two or three seconds, and there you go. It is a trusted system. So now we've already set up the KMS environment. And what we're going to do next is set up vSAN itself to enable encryption. Now, this is not the most exciting demo, I must say, because setting up encryption is really, really straightforward. You go to the vSAN uh, section on the configure. You click edit on a cluster level. And you're going to enable encryption. So you just simply tick the encryption tick box. Make sure you have the right KMS server. Uh, selected and you're good to go. So before we go ahead and click OK, there are two advanced options that I would like to discuss. The first one is called Erase Disks Before Use. And Erase Disk Before Use does exactly what you would uh, expect it to do. The one thing I want to point out here is though, when you erase all of the disks before using the vSAN data store, it also means that the amount of time it takes for reformatting the drives is significantly longer than it would normally, uh, normally take. So keep that into consideration when you're building out these environments. And the other thing uh, that's also an option to use is allow reduced redundancy. Now, allow reduced redundancy is typically used in non-greenfield deployments, so in a situation where you already have VMs up and running, and you potentially don't have sufficient disk space to evacuate disk groups, so to move all of the data of the disk groups itself to ensure that virtual machines are still compliant with their policy. So if you potentially don't have enough disk space available and you're okay with having virtual machines machines running on only a single copy of the data then go ahead and select this option in my case i am not going to select this, these options because it's a greenfield deployment i don't have any virtual machines up running so i'm just going to go ahead and click ok so what's going to happen next is that all of the disks uh, within the environment and all of the disks of the disk groups are going to be reformatted. 
this typically takes about you know 10 15 uh, minutes of course depending on the um, the size of the environment it could take a bit longer if you have a really large environment in my case as you can see i only have four nodes in the cluster each of them having four disks so it's going to go rather fast uh, i cut out uh, a, a bit of time uh, i don't want to bore you guys watching this uh, this percentage just uh, just go up so i cut out some of the some of the time and want to show you what it looks like when it's finished so it's going to complete uh, within a couple of seconds and then what we're going to do next is create a virtual machine and see if anything from a virtual machine provisioning standpoint has changed what does it look like after we've enabled uh, vSAN encryption is there any difference from a provisioning standpoint is there any difference from an operational perspective and there we go encryption has been enabled for vSAN in this environment in about 13 14 minutes so what we're going to do next as i just mentioned we're going to create a new virtual machine and we're going to check if anything has changed from a vm provisioning standpoint uh, we're going to give it a random name first and then we will need to select a host within the cluster because i didn't enable the DRS in this particular cluster so we're going to go ahead and select a host and then we'll select the vsend data store and we'll use the uh, the standard vm storage policy as you can see so far not much has changed it just looks like a regular virtual machine provisioning uh, workflow uh, which will make your life from operational standpoint a lot easier everything from an encryption perspective happens on the back end and it happens data store wide so there's nothing you need to think about and nothing you need to worry about anymore from that uh, that point of view so after we've created the uh, the virtual machine what we're going to do to show you guys that encryption actually has been enabled is open up a command prompt and SSH into one of the, uh, the hosts. So I'm going to SSH into the, uh, the first host. I'm going to use the, uh, the root account for that. And then after logging in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run an uh, ESX CLI command. In this particular case, I'm going to use ESX CLI vSAN storage list. And ESX CLI vSAN storage list should provide me uh, all of the uh, the disks that are being used by vSAN in this particular cluster. After running the command, which I'll do in a second, you'll see that there are four different devices. And on these devices, there should be an option that says encryption is true. Let me highlight that, that section for you so it stands out a bit more. Uh, as I mentioned, we have four of these devices. Three of these devices are part of the capacity layer. One of them is part of the, uh, the caching layer. And as you can see on all four devices, uh, devices encryption is enabled. So even the data that's stored within the, uh, the caching layer is encrypted. I want to point out that if you're using uh, things like deduplication and compression, when we're actually moving blocks from the, uh, the caching tier into the, uh, the capacity layer, what we'll do is we'll decrypt the data, we'll dedupe and compress it, We'll encrypt, encrypt the data again, and then we'll store it on the, uh, the capacity layer. So it's not only stored in a secure manner, but also in a space efficient manner. So now that I've shown you that uh, vSAN encryption is, is running, there's one other thing I want to show you, and that is the, uh, the health check, because of course there's also a health check for vSAN encryption. So we're gonna go to the monitor section, then uh, we're going to click vSAN, we'll select health, and then we're going to go to the, uh, the encryption uh, part. In the encryption uh, section itself, there are uh, there are two options, and the the first option is all about the instruction set that Intel introduced. Uh, this instruction set uh, enables us to uh, to have a, a, a great performing encryption option uh, based in software. So of course, vSAN leverages that, and as you can see, all of the four hosts are leveraging that particular instruction set as well. And the other thing that we're checking for in this particular case is if the KMS has been uh, correctly set up and is connected. As you can see, the KMS has been set up and is connected, so our environment is good to go. And with that, we've reached the end of my demo. I would like to thank all of you uh, for watching my demo, and I hope to see you guys next time.